Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Caroline Spitz. My name is Caroline and I live in Scotland with my husband Ben and our dog Fela who is currently asleep next to me. Let's see how long it lasts now that I'm talking. Um, I am originally Danish but I have lived in Scotland for coming up to nine years I think and I am here today to talk all about my knitting. This is actually a refilm because I have definitely filmed this episode once and I just realised after filming it that I filmed it on a day where I was like tail end of my period, a complete brain fog and once I'd filmed it I was like I didn't say anything I was hoping to say so I decided to leave it for another week or two and just film when it sort of felt right. It's always hard with these podcasts to film when you're in the right kind of mood and make sure you kind of put the right, um, you have to be in the, the right mood to sit and talk to yourself and come across the right way. Um, as usual, um, anything I talk about today, I always link in the description box. So if you're looking for patterns, um, then they're always down there. I also always link to my Ravelry project page where um, I keep an up-to-date collection of um, my latest projects. So um, on the Ravelry project pages, you'll see the exact yarn amounts. It just means I don't have to remember. And it will also push me to do it for the projects that I am talking about today because I have um, two projects that I haven't updated the project pages for. And then I should also say that funnily enough, I have now reached a point where I have um, more subscribers on YouTube than I have followers on Instagram so I should pl probably plug my Instagram as well which is also linked down below and on my Instagram I um, obviously maintain a grid of my projects as they sort of come and go um, and if you ever want to see more of my little menace asleep next to me and in her uh, slightly more energetic moods I tend to share bits of failure I tend to share a bit of life in general so um, you can find me on there I'm also um, I try to always stay on top of comments as they come in, but if you do have anything that you would like to message me about, you can always contact me on Instagram. Since the last episode didn't go as well as planned, I have actually made um, a list of notes today, so hopefully it won't be too roughly as I, I look down at this page. Um, I might see if I can just pop it over here. Um, I actually, because I've waited a little bit longer than usual, I actually have a few more finished um, projects. I should also say that um, in January I did a video every week so if you haven't seen any of that content um, it's obviously on my channel. Um, I also recently posted uh, weekend outfits, um, it's about 10 minutes long so a lot shorter than my podcasts usually are and if you do have any sort of video requests I'd like to film a few more general knitting chats um, simply because um, I just don't knit fast enough that I could podcast much more frequently because then I'd um, you know, as quite a monogamous knitter, it's kind of boring to have a podcast, but the main thing you show is that you've added a sleeve to the same project you showed last time. Um, so please do comment them down below because I'd love to hear it. Um, I really enjoy making videos, but sometimes it's about knowing what you want to make videos about. So let's move on to my finished projects. Um, that's where we'll start. So I'll start with the one I finished first, which is this. Um, I will, as usual, also pop in a cutaway in a minute um, when I sort of move on. But this is sweater number 18. It's a design by My Favourite Things Knitwear. It is a um, drop sh dropped shoulder construction and it has this all over um, knit and pearl, um, sort of not quite lace, but pattern texture all over it. And um, yeah, it was a very, very enjoyable knit. So the fit is obviously slightly oversized because of the knits and pearls. I will say that a good blog was definitely needed. When I first finished the sweater, um, the sleeves were definitely too short, but as I've knitted it in quite drapey yarn, they actually blocked out so, so well. Um, I just stretched them as much as I could and I've had no spring back at all because I think the yarn quite likes to be stretched. Um, the pattern is definitely for drop shoulder. It's quite a good like advanced beginner type pattern. Um, 
The nice thing is that you don't actually have to read any charts for it if you don't want to. There are charts in the pattern if that's the route you prefer. Um, but she also describes it line by line. And I quite like that because it was easy to sort of feel like you were progressing. Um, and I've always thought that Louise, one of my favourite things, makes the most beautiful drop shoulder designs. And um, I just love the fit of this. I have spoken about the yarn a few times. Um, this is Lanagato Feeling held with um, hand-dyed baby seal alpaca from Sakami. Um, and it's this beautiful like pinkish um, colour and um, the sort of base of the Surya alpaca matches the, the, the feeling, Lanagato feeling perfectly. Um, and then the hand-dyed has specks of mainly orange and a bit of dark purple. I didn't alternate skeins with this, um, so there's some definite pooling, especially because the first skein was um, had more of those darker flecks in it than the rest, but I've always kind of seen that as the charm of the yarn. Um, so I don't I don't really mind that, but I know some people might mind it more. And I think I mind it less when like this, um, the yarn is like speckly more than it's like really variegated, I guess you could say. Um, what else is there to say about it? The yarn, I did have some balls of the both yarns left over. Um, and all along, I, I kept doubting myself if I'd pick the right pattern, which is quite rare for me. Because usually, I, if I'm not test knitting, I very much like to knit on like what my stomach tells me. Like if a project feels right, I'll continue with it or um, stomach, my gut, I guess you say, right? It's your gut feeling. Anyway, um, but the more I progressed with it, I just couldn't really put it down. Like I could tell I really enjoyed knitting it. And now that it's finished, I think it's one of those where like, no, you don't have... Like this pattern would probably be better in a solid yarn and this yarn would probably have been better in a non-pattern pattern. However, I still think it's created quite a lovely effect and I found this so easy to wear in my wardrobe. The drop shoulder designs, um, well, you can see another one I'm wearing right now, they just fit so well into my day-to-day -day life. I don't know if it's my favourite fit for how it makes me look, because obviously, because they're oversized, you do tend to look a bit more frumpy. But I just find for home office, this has been something I wanted to wear every day. The Lanagato feeling is a 70% 70, 70 merino, 20% silk and 10% cashmere blend. So with the baby Surrey, this is like as soft as it comes. Um, I do find Surrey wears quite well. So this has already had quite a lot of wear and there's no like obvious pilling. It does get a slightly more brush look than maybe like holding a strand of um, my hair would, um, but that doesn't, that doesn't really bother me. Um, for the balls left over, my plan is that the baby Surrey becomes a Monica scarf um, by Aniela Knits. And um, the leftover Lanagato feeling, I'm actually planning to make probably a Sophie scarf. Don't shoot me, I know it's like the most overdone pattern in the past few months, but the yarn is just so perfectly soft to be worn as a scarf. And it's not actually for me, it's for my auntie. Um, so I have cleared with her that um, she would like a Sophie scarf. I also offered the Lao Lu shawl um, from, God, what's her name? Asari Nordlin, um, but she preferred the Sophie scarf. So that's what I'm planning to make um, before I go home in April. Um, so yeah, all in all, really enjoyable. It's it's every bit as good as I kind of thought it would be. It's um, not the newest pattern anymore from my favourite things. I think she released it around this time last year. And ever since I saw sweater number 18, I just knew I had to own it. So um, I do love how in this design compared to both my sweater number 20 and sweater number 23, that I also drop shoulder, that she has in um, incorporated quite a lot of decreases down the sleeve so you do get a slightly slimmer fitting sleeve which I just um, slightly prefer when wearing it um, so yes this is my first finished object the next finished object is what I am currently wearing um, so for full transparency the dog just 
the dog likes sweating on the eating she just put her little head on it um this is um for full transparency this yarn was gifted for this test knit and um, this is sweater number 24 which is also a design by my favorite things knitwear um as you can tell it is really lovely and fluffy it's um the fit is as you would kind of expect it's a drop shoulder you pick up for the neckline and the sleeves and all of this um both the sweater number 18 and probably this I will probably at some point put in an elastic because I can already tell that back here you can probably see what's underneath um I just think the boucle doesn't have that kind of structure to it um so yeah I will probably go back and do that obviously the big star of the show of this sweater it's a it's a classic drop shoulder design um in contrast to other drop shoulders I've knitted from her um they have usually been um where the drop shoulders essentially that you <clears throat> excuse me that you increase along the shoulder which creates that kind of pickup line um but for this you actually do um short rows on the back instead and I wish I could show you how that looks but I still don't really have a feel for it because the boucle kind of hides it so um, the yarn for this is um, My Hair by Canard, My Boucle Solid, I think. I'll, I always write it in a box that pops up so you've probably seen the actual name of it. And it's held with one strand of ECL Packer One. So both of these yarns were kindly gifted by My Hair by Canard and ECL. What I, you know, when I when I got offered this test knit, I... Um, I really do enjoy test knitting, um, but I always find that it has to be the right time and place. And I feel like by now my stash is so big and some of my yarn is so old that if if I was to sign up for non-sponsored test knits, unless I can in unless I would knit that pattern in the exact yarn in my stash, I probably wouldn't test knit as much anymore because I like to reserve the right to say, you know, this isn't the right the right pattern for this yarn and so I am obviously extremely fortunate and privileged to be offered these sponsored test knits so um I think that's also why you've seen me do more sponsored test knits than not um I did test knit for Rebecca back in November and that wasn't sponsored that was yarn for my stash um so when I got offered this test knit from Louise um I asked about the yarn choices because that was really something I was like I don't know if I'm concerned about is the the right way to put it but I was definitely conscious that prior to being offered this test knit I wasn't completely convinced that Boucle was really up my street I I think Boucle as it's sort of come back into being trendy has is like it's like you kind of have to be like an effortlessly chic person I feel like to pull off Boucle and I actually wrote to Louise I was like are you are you really sure that I can pull off Boucle and she can you know she was um definitely very positive that I can um so I thought a little bit about it I looked at the color choices and I realized that um My Hair by Canard has so many stunning shades of Boucle so they have a solid color range but they also do like a speckled like almost hand-dyed looking um Boucle range and as you probably know if you've been watching me for a while I do tend to love like hand-dyed and crazy colours and all of this um but with the boucle I kind of wanted the boucle to be the only thing that felt a bit out of my comfort zone I then didn't also want to pick I know some of the testers for example they picked this this beautiful bright pink and while I love the look of it it's just one of those things I wouldn't have felt like I could pull off so I was incredibly brave and decided to pick fully black. Um, so this, both of these colours are true solid blacks. So I decided to go for full solid black and I was definitely nervous about what it would be like to knit with Boucle. If you've never seen like Boucle on its own, it's essentially the yarn has these tiny little loops on it. Um, and that's kind of how it's made. I think it's um, basically one of the ways you can process my hair. Um, I think this boucle is a, let's see. This is a 78% my hair, 13% wool and 9% nylon. And it is described as 
My hair is the fleece and then gore goi. It's known as a diamond fibre within natural fibres. You'll experience a durability and elasticity which is completely unique. Characteristics of my hair, luster, volume, elasticity, flame resistant, uh, dye as well and lightweight. And I definitely think the lightweightness is true. Despite what probably looks like quite a dense sweater, I don't find this dense to wear at all. Um, and I actually used less yarn than I expected. So I still have um, quite a few um, unfinished skeins of this left. Um, so I'm looking to think about what how I want to use them up because obviously it's a stunning yarn. Um, so I'll definitely find some projects that the, the boucle can go into. But if you do have any suggestions, let me know. Um, knitting with boucle is interesting. Um, I will say it's quite tough on your hands. Now, as has become a, too much of a trend for me, I received the, the yarn at least a week later than most of the testers. And because I knit in a size XL, I just have a lot of knitting to get through. And I once again didn't meet the deadline. I have a feeling this might be my last test knit for my favorite things. Um, but you know, um, I simply just cannot knit a full sweater in two weeks, especially especially something like this because the gauge is quite good as 15 stitches per 10 centimeters. So you are knitting it on fairly big needles. Um, but boucle, I just found you can never knit that fast in. As you're knitting, you first of all have to knit quite forcefully. So you have to like really drive through um, the right hand needle as far into the stitch as you can to make sure if there are any loops you've caught them properly and then you have to grab the yarn again a bit more forcefully than I probably would in my normal knitting style and as you're knitting you will find that loops will get stuck on the needle and the easiest is to drop it off. What made it slightly harder is that um, at first it could be hard to distinguish between what was a loop from the boucle and what was actually the alpaca one um, so I found once I dropped it off the needle, I could kind of see like the boucle kind of fluffs up, whereas this doesn't. So if it didn't fluff up, I quickly caught it back on so that I didn't drop half a stitch. Um, so yeah, it, it certainly isn't the easiest. Now, the good thing about knitting it is particularly in a colour like this is that obviously black is um, hard to knit in, is in that it's hard to see what's going on, to be honest. If you looked at the wrong side. I'm not sure that even with all the knowledge I have now, I would be able to tell it was the wrong side. Um, so, you know, it is quite camouflaged in black already and then adding the boucle on top of it, it just, you cannot read any form of knitting in this. Like if you can read this, I would be very impressed. Like I can only just about see where I've started the ribbing. <laughs> um, the good thing is on the other hand, that again, in the black in contrast, maybe to a bright pink, is that it? If there are any mistakes, you're never going to see it. I sent a picture of Louise uh, to Louise when I'd done the shoulder pickup, and honestly, you cannot see where the stitches have been picked up. There's not even a line. Like when I have to put the sweater on, it wouldn't even surprise me if I put it on back to front today. Yeah, I can feel it just there. I literally have to feel on the wrong side for where you can feel the pickup because you cannot see it. Um, so I think in I was actually nervous that it would be a lot harder than it turned out to be. Now, my top tips from, for knitting in boucle, but in particular in, back, in black boucle, is that stitch markers are your best friends. So when I knitted the gauge swatch, I deliberately picked five stitches, put uh, stitch markers on it as I was knitting so that I knew I was in the right rows. And then when I blocked it, um, I found also for picking up stitches that it's the easiest to do if you have a light source behind it because you can see in between the stitches and you can see where you're meant to pick up. Um, and I basically measured my gauge swatch on top of my iPad so I had light coming up through through it. And then having those five stitches marked was really helpful. The same for things like the body ribbing and the, the ribbing on the sleeve. In, you know, currently I'm sitting in front of a window, so the light is a lot brighter. And so you could probably have taught, like been able to tell more easily where you started your ribbing. Um, but it was just easier to just put a stitch marker in, um, just so you know where to measure from. Um, for weaving in ends, I will say this is the easiest yarn I've ever woven in ends because you can literally not tell. I just kind of smushed it all over the back. Uh, usually I do duplicate stitches on the back of um, any stock in it. 
I just find in general that's the most invisible but for this there was no point because I couldn't even see where it was meant to be duplicate stitching. So all in all um do like bouquet wasn't as terrible as I thought and I do feel like this kind of black crazy teddy bear sweater um is something I will naturally just get lots of wear out of um I have very much discovered that sweaters that work especially in my home office are the sweaters I wear Lloyd's I do wear knits when I go to office as you'll see if you've seen my weekend knits but you know um this is perfect for wearing out with a dog for taking her places and it being black it makes no difference that I tend to spill food and tea all over myself every day so um cheers to that what I should also talk about is then what the level of this pattern is now the construction itself isn't complicated it's not that different um in my opinion to the difficulty of sweater number 18 you do have to pick up stitches and I do find that to be a more advanced skill than we sometimes give it like credit for um to do that neatly it's a very you know specific skill and especially the neckline and stuff I find it can be really hard to pick that up neatly However, I would consider this uh, a much more advanced pattern simply because working in boucle is difficult. You cannot count or really see what the stitches are like. And there was a stitch, um, I was essentially knit uh, knitting on this in a meeting and there was a stitch where I had only caught the alpaca one, I hadn't caught the boucle thread. Now, usually if I come across that in any of my knitting, I just quickly fix it. But for some reason, probably because I was in that meeting, I was like, I don't really have time to fix it. I'll just knit on, you won't be able to tell, and you definitely could. So I decided to try letting the stitch drop down and then picking it back up. And I just couldn't. Like, I honestly couldn't see where things were meant to go. I couldn't catch the right stitches. I kept getting all the, like, loops stuck in, like, my crochet hook. And in the end, I just tinked back uh, to that exact point and redid it because fixing mistakes in this is like just so difficult and I think for that exact reason this pattern is just harder because I think you have to be more diligent when you're knitting it to knit it properly you have to fix mistakes as you see them you have to be able to spot the mistakes before you move on and not being able to read your knitting I find as a very beginner knitter I wasn't a very I wasn't very good uh, read, reading my knitting but as I became slightly more advanced and I became much better at reading my knitting I realized how much I rely on it and you just can't rely on it for this um I did make one small mistake that I will mention because you can I don't think it's that noticeable to anyone else but I realized that um I think it's this sleeve <laughs> is actually knitted on a four and a half millimeter needle instead of the five that the other one is so one sleeve is ever so slightly more snug but I'm not gonna lie, by the time I cast off the second sleeve, I just wanted to be done. <laughs> I just didn't want to go back over it. Um, yeah, probably should have, but when I think about it, I can feel the difference, but I don't think it's like that noticeable to the naked eye, so I've just accepted it. Um, the next thing is that funnily enough, um, you you she asked if she asks for Italian bind off and I did do Italian bind off it's my favorite after all but honestly I don't even know if you can tell that I've done an Italian bind off all over this sweater but I have so at least I've mentioned it here so I get some kind of credit for going through that effort instead of just binding off in pattern and finally when I knitted the neckline I um it says in the pattern to uh, basically knit it down but I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to knit down this neck pattern properly. Um, and so I actually decided to sew it down. I think I'm starting to find that for these picked up necklines, I actually prefer the final um, product more when I do sew it down. So I might just have to start doing that. It's also quicker, to be honest. Um, if I do like a top down, you know, you start with the neckline kind of sweater, I do find it neater if you knit down um, the neckline as you go but for this I just didn't really see the point. So overall I am really happy about this finished product and um, I put up a picture of it yesterday. Um, that's also why I'm wearing extra grungy makeup today because I put that on yesterday because I knew I was taking finished object photos 
and I just love the way the sort of slightly more grungy dark eye makeup looked on me so I thought I'd do it again today. Um, slightly more glam with the hair. My sister phoned me to talk about something and I thought oh, may as well use the time to get uh, slightly more dolled up for today. But anyway, overall, really happy with this. I think it will see a lot of wear. Um, and I would also be surprised um, if this wears really badly. I feel like the pilling on this would be less noticeable. But let's see, I will report back in my year in it uh, later this year. Now, my final finished object is actually one of those like stash busting knits that I often start at the tail end of a bigger project if I don't know what I'm doing next or I'm just craving something that sort of finishes um, quicker. I'm also noticing that that thumb is definitely shorter um, and this is one of those so these are um, also a pattern that's been done to death I'm sure. Uh, this, uh, these are the penny gloves by Petite Knit and they are knitted in alpaca one, so the same yarn that I used um, that I used for this sweater, but a different colour. So we were at the very tail end of the alpaca one, and um, I thought they gauge wise they work for these, and so I just thought you know what actually be a good use of it because I did have quite a lot left. I knitted, I bought the alpaca one for the office sweater by Knit Flitter, which I knitted. This time two years ago, then I used some of the leftover yarn from that um, in my Kerr sweater that I knit in November and I was on the like very last ball of a pack of one and I didn't actually use a full ball for these. So if you are looking um, to like, you know, buy a yarn to knit someone a press in and you want it to be like really nice yarn, I would definitely recommend Alpaca One. It's 100% alpaca, it's um, nice and fluffy. I don't think the black is as fluffy as the grey one, um, just so you know, but it's very, very soft, um, has great structure to it. And um, because you get 50 grams, um, I think there's 400 meters per ball, yeah. Um, so essentially it can replace a strand of my hair without being my hair. Um, but you know, in a usual uh, ball of my hair, you get, you know, 200 to 225 meters. Um, so you actually, with the 400 meters, you essentially need half the amount of my hair because you get 400 meters. Um, so it's actually quite a affordable option, all things considered, especially for something like this. Um, where you don't need a full ball and I'll make sure to measure what is left of the alpaca one and update the Ravelry page for these. Um, when I first saw penny gloves I thought I would never wear that. Um, it reminded me of the early or like late 2000s where um, we were all, you know, I, I'm sure I wasn't the only one who slightly flirted with being a slightly emo and it just reminded me of like those like emo kids and the fingerless gloves that you used to wear and thought you were really cool um, but it's turned out um, to be so practical because these are actually my second pair. Um, I have shown these on the podcast before in a considerably cleaner state and um, these are unblocked by the way um, so I can also tell that they are definitely smaller um, than my other pair which might just be because they haven't been washed and blocked and worn yet so I have to report back and see if they slightly change but I don't mind a slightly tighter fit. Um, but this was my very first pair. Um, these are knitted in Phil Colana Saga and in Phil Colana Telia um, so they are slightly different yarn choice and I don't know if you can tell um, just how disgusting these are. Um, they have mud all at the very top because what I've figured out with these is that um, at first I wore them a lot on drives in the morning so when I go to CrossFit I'm up really early. When you first get in the car it's always cold because you're tired, you're extra cold and I just love like crazying up my hands in the penny gloves and then I discovered over winter that because I walk Baylor with lots of treats um I just can't wear like big gloves when I walk her because she's not able um like because you can't really have like a big mitten and then pick up little treats and feed them to her so I kind of need my hands out but then when it gets really cold my hands just can't keep its temperature and 
then I start wearing these and now they are disgusting. Um, so when these get blocked, I will throw in some pairs of socks too, I think, and these and hope that I can get some of the mud of it, uh, mud off them. Um, and then these will probably be relegated to something because I feel like this grey colour will be more forgiving with all the mud and leftover dog treats on them. Um, but yeah, they have just been so useful. And yeah, it's quite rare that I am willing to knit the same pattern twice. But what I love about these is really that they are the simply like the simplest construction, the perfect mindless knitting. They're great if you have to like go somewhere and you don't want to take a big sweater, but you want to do mini stockinette. They are just excellent. So um, I'm already thinking about all the yarns in my stash that I could make more pairs from. Um, because my hope is really that I can sort of keep up with doing um, one smaller project in between my bigger projects, just because I do have um, so many like single balls of yarn that I have to sort of start working through at some point. And the more I knit through these, um, the more I can, you know, I don't, I only need so many pairs of penny gloves so I can also start to gift them to, you know, friends and family because I really do think many of them would really appreciate a soft pair of penny gloves. And because they require um, less than a full ball, they're also great for if you've already done, you know, a big project, you've done maybe a stash busting project already and then when you have the final bits left over you can basically squeeze a pair of penny gloves out of them. So very tough with these. Um, and now they just need to be washed. I'm so surprised. She's so tired, which isn't like you, is it? You're also shedding so much. Mum has already brushed you once today. And now she's petting you all these little hairs are coming up. Oh, oh you should tie to a straight little baby. Little baby. So that's my uh, three finished objects, which is quite good. I haven't decided what my next um, stash busting project is going to be. I might knit a pair of socks. Um, I had some my hair in my stash that fits really well with some non super wash yarns in my stash um, that I bought for socks. So I think I might actually knit a pair of socks um, is my current thinking um, because I do like to wear my knitted socks. So my current only um, work in progress, I started after sweater number 18, but before I started this, um, so I have just returned back to it and this is the current state of it, um, which is not particularly charming just yet, is it? It's kind of for that stage where it really needs a, a neckline, I think, to bring it all together. Um, but this is the Semper Sweater by The Knit Pearl Girl, my lovely friend Sophie. Um, it's the Semper Sweater V-neck, I should say, which is why you see this obviously big v-neck. Um, I've spoken about the yarn many a time so I will just quickly mention that it was a wedding present. Um, so it's one strand of hand-dyed suri, baby suri apaka silk from Sakami, um, bought to me by my, um, bought, bought for me or given, gifted to me by my lovely knitting friends when they came to my wedding and um, Sakami kindly threw in um, camel silk, undyed camel silk to go with it. So that's what I'm knitting this up in. Um, this project is great because when I started this, I was just, after the start of the year where I knitted that big Sharpie sweater, I was honestly just craving a classic raglan. I didn't want to pick up stitches. I didn't want to think too much. I just wanted something easy. And the Semper sweater really fits that. It is a very, very well written and detailed pattern. So if you are newer to knitting, I think it's definitely a beginner friendly pattern. So if you write beautifully detailed pattern that really takes you through the whole process and this is no exception. Knitting flat wasn't as terrible as I kind of thought it would be. I'm excited to see how much the neckline will pull together when I put that on. I will say that I um, gauge swatched um, a full millimeter down and I think I was like I had two or three stitches too many so my gauge was too tight and I always knit looser in the final project anyway so I decided to size up half a needle size um and knit the size I would want and then I don't mind if it becomes a little bit oversized or undersized um but since I'm not testing it I actually quite enjoy going a little bit off piste as well because because I've spent so much time testing, sometimes it's nice to just like 
kind of just shoot it with things like gauge. So I'm hoping it turns out well. It's probably my famous last words, isn't it? Next time I'll turn up, I'll be like, that was a mistake on my behalf. Um, but that also means that things like this sleeve is looking a little bit wider to me than I think it's meant to. Um, probably because my gauge is off, so don't mind too much. Um, I decided to do what I often do, which is I'm going to finish both sleeves, probably put the neckline, neckline on and then I'll finish the body because then I won't stress about running out of yarn for those type of things and I can knit as much length on the body as I want. Um, the final thing I wanted to mention is that in the pattern, Sophie describes um, a tubular bind off in comparison to an Italian cast off or bind off. Now, I'm definitely not an expert on what techniques are called what, but I think the biggest difference is that for tubular kind uh, bind off, you basically do this kind of uh, double knitting before you bind off, and it's meant to create a slightly like thicker. Um, thicker bind off I suck at it and I did it for this first sleeve and just looking at it I am just not happy about it at all <laughs> and that's not a fault on Sophie's behalf it's obviously a fault on me um and so I think I've decided that I I honestly just personally prefer a very classic Italian bind off I don't think I need the double knitting rose or I think it's double knitting. I don't think I need that um, in order to be happy with the, the bind off. And so um, I did weave in the end. So I'll have to start unwinding it and then I'll just take that back and redo it, which is rare for me to do. But I also realised that if I'm not happy now and looking at it, this isn't something blocking is going to fix. I would actually rather just do it properly. And at least I didn't do it for the body ribbing. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. Um, and that's my current whip. Um, I will probably cast something else on soon. I do mainly knit monogamously, but I do quite enjoy having um, one or two other projects on the go at the same time. So I will probably do that soon. <laughs> do, you, do you love this little foot? This little foot from my sleepy puppy? Yes. Um, so that's that's basically all the knitting related content so if you're not here for the personal chat then um, see you next time. I will try to keep this uh, shorter um, this time because I feel like the past few times this section has been way too long and in the first episode um, and the first time I filmed this episode I definitely went on a complete rant. Probably not helped by the fact it was that time of the month um, and um, I've been experiencing some health issues. I went off birth control um coming up a bit over a year ago maybe more basically I started getting um migraines when I had the break from my pill which is um a common side effect of the drop in estrogen and if you start getting those migraines they basically just say that you should stop taking birth control or the combined pill then I tried for a while with the mini pill but we just weren't getting on so I basically started having a period every other week, which is just unsustainable. So um, this summer I decided to just go au natural, which is quite um, a strange thing when you've taken birth control for so many years. We're not currently trying to conce uh, conceive, so it's not some kind of sneaky, um, you know, sneaky announcement that you can expect a baby announcement anytime soon I have no plans to have a baby this year um so um obviously if it happens I'm happily married but um it's not currently in the plan um but it's been interesting to go back to being you know artificially hormone free um I've never really understood the hate on birth control especially because there was many years of my life where I would have struggled without it Obviously, it's a way to make sure you don't conceive, um, which is one aspect. But another aspect is just if you like me have horrible cycles, it's a much easier way to control it. So um, for a little while it normalised, but I'm now back to about a 50 day cycle with a nine day period, which obviously isn't ideal and is abnormal for, for a woman my age. So um, I have been encouraged by some lovely friends that I should definitely go back to the doctor. 
I went once earlier this year because I also suffer from really heavy periods. Um, shout out to period pants, which are a lifesaver. They are my absolute favourite. Um, but I went to the doctor, I had an ultrasound to check and there wasn't and blood done as well. And there wasn't anything obvious at first, but I'm kind of hoping we can investigate a bit further because I do have some strange symptoms that could be hormone related. And while we aren't currently trying to conceive at the point in time that we do decide to, if there are going to be issues with my fertility because of my hormone levels, I'd kind of like to have that sorted first. Um, so that's something that's been taking up a lot of my mind, I guess, and sort of been something I've been thinking a lot about. And I really want to break this taboo that periods are private and something no one should talk about because um, so, you know, half the world's population experiences it and it's an inherent um, issue um, or not issue, but it's something I know lots of people who menstruate have issues with and difficulty with and if we never talk about it then it just keeps being this weird taboo um so i'm keen to stop that but at least you're seeing me sort of on the um ovulation phase so i am always in a much better place and mood and everything during ovulation phase so i should always time podcast filming for around then um my mental health is definitely also uh, two steps forward one step back um I spoke a lot about it last time and I definitely haven't achieved everything I set out to do. My sleep still isn't perfect, but I have been good at walking the little monster, haven't I? We've been out in nature quite a lot, you and I, um, which I do really, really enjoy. Um, another big change is that I have really committed to going back to CrossFit. Um, especially in prep for the wedding last year, I really got into, it started from an unhealthy point, which if you look back, you can see me talk about in the podcast, but essentially I needed to, to lose enough weight to fit back into my dress and never achieved that. But I did get to a point where I was just loving CrossFit and I felt so good in my body. I think after the wedding, I was just burnt out with it all and I really fell off the bandwagon. And I think my, my mental health in general just took a bad turn towards the tail end of the year. And I kind of know that CrossFit is one step to getting better sleep because when you frequently exercise, you're just more tired in the evening. Um, second of all, my body requires it too. As much as taking the little minutes for walks is good for me. Yes, it is good for me. It's good for you too, isn't it? Because you run so fast. It still isn't enough to keep me in in the best shape so it's good for that and I just like having a positive focus where I go somewhere and I just try to better myself I am by no means um, a CrossFit champion or really fit or anything but I do my best um, so that's you know that's the best you can hope for so I've actually been much better at sticking to it and I feel much better for it and I can already start to see um, some of my fitness coming back which is really nice and then I still need to sort out my sleep schedule. Let's hope that next time I do a podcast it'll be much better. The final thing I wanted to mention is that um, this little menace, come on here, come on, come on, come on, come on, are you too tired to sit? Come on, yes you, you got your bronze hoopers award didn't you because you're a smart mama. Um, so we're still really, really loving Hoopers and I thought I'd give her a shout out because she got her bronze Good Hoopers Award, um, which I'm really proud of. And um, I have started using this app called Finch, um, which I would really recommend if you're also struggling with mental health. But it's an app where you essentially have um, this bird looking creature, a bit like a Tamagotchi that you take care of and you do it by... Um, setting different goals and it has loads of areas for reflections and a big part of getting better is obviously if you go down the like cognitive behavioral therapy route it's also to change your outlook on life and in order to change my outlook on life I need to focus on the positives and not just on the negatives right like finish each day on a high essentially not that kind of high um so I started using the app and on that app you basically I one of my goals is to say something I'm grateful for every day 
and it's been actually really really lovely because I realized when I sit and I think about what I'm grateful for for that day this little monster is something I'm grateful for every day because she just brings me so much joy again no one tells you how terrible it is to get a puppy but it's really tough work and I know lots of people say their pets are good for their mental health and all I can say a puppy isn't good for your mental health um but I am so appreciative that we've now hit the point where I am grateful for her every day um I just love her pure joy of life and her pure love for people around her how she'll come cuddle me uh, she's now decided that all meetings she has to come sit on my lap at my desk for at least five minutes um which <laughs> always makes people laugh um but also just when we're out for walks the way she just sometimes she'll just stop and smell the air and i do that too and it makes me appreciate nature around me it makes me appreciate getting out of the house and feeling more refreshed so Fela is something I'm grateful for every day um, and that's really all I had to say so thank you so so much for watching um, I hope you'll stick around and I'll see you again soon bye <laughs>